As soon as human beings started to build, they produced very complex structures that took great technological skill and were also in harmony with the sun, the moon and the stars. Much of what was known about designing by the stars has been forgotten. So has the purpose and function of at least 50,000 megalithic monuments erected around 3,500 years ago between the north of Scotland and North Africa. Both the creators of the ring ditch enclosures and the designers of the Nebra sky disk obviously knew the Earth and the cosmos incredibly well. This is what a ring ditch enclosure looked like 7,000 years ago. It's a reconstruction at Heldenberg, roughly 40 kilometers northwest of Vienna. Around 130 cult sites like it have been identified north of the Danube and along the Elbe River. Thanks to modern science, even dyes have been identified, dyes that were also used as makeup. Leftover food from feasts has been found, but no sign of burials. Religious beliefs and the ideas and thoughts that were behind them are a real mystery, a mystery that's very difficult for archaeologists to explain because all we normally have to work with are the material remains of civilization. The period during which ring ditch enclosures were built spanned only 350 years. The wooden buildings were then destroyed and the ditches filled in. Without aerial photographs and ground radar, we wouldn't know anything about these structures at all. We see the intention to create a way into the complex along very narrow bridges flanked by deep ditches. But mostly, there's no direct visual contact with the inner sanctum. Everyone entering was guided around it. There are clear signs of barriers at various points. Certain people came here to watch something, and they were kept at a distance. There's also evidence of geometrical design. In the case of double ring sites, the ratio of the diameters is mostly 2 to 3 or 3 to 4, and in a few rare cases, 1 to 2. Chance certainly played no part in their design. We have here what we have here is underlying knowledge, knowledge that can be seen in the orientation of the complexes, in the orientation of the entrances used for certain events during the course of the year. They tell us that these people lived very close to nature and that they made a connection between heaven and earth. The 21st of June at the so-called Solar Observatory near the small German town of Gossek in Saxony-Anhalt. What looks at first like an adventure playground is actually an accurate full-scale reconstruction located on the very site that was excavated. Three gateways lead into the inner circle of the 6,000 square meter complex. The wooden palisade fence is ringed by an embankment and a ditch one and a half meters deep and three and a half meters wide. A double ring of oak palisades two and a half meters high encloses an area 75 meters in diameter. As elsewhere, the village associated with the complex was built on a separate site nearby. Both the winter solstice and the longest day of the year are clearly marked by gates or by thicker posts in the palisades. From mid-September to the end of April, a special group of stars is visible. 
the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters. Although they are around 400 light years away, they are still within our galaxy. These facts were certainly not known 7,000 years ago, but the Seven Sisters were obviously very significant even then. I noticed that around a third of the ring ditch complexes in Austria have a gate facing the direction where the Pleiades rise. That in itself was a staggering discovery. But there's more. On the other side, almost exactly opposite, is a gate I can connect with another star, Antares. Antares is the main star in the Scorpius constellation. And what is really astonishing is that just minutes after Antares sets, that is when it's framed by the gate on that side, the Pleiades rise up from the other gate. How did the astronomers' findings go down at the Ludwig Botsmann Institute for Virtual Archaeology in Vienna? The archaeologists were very skeptical. They dismissed them as over-fantasizing. They found the whole thing very implausible and wanted more corroborative evidence. So I took a closer look. I looked at everything the archaeologists had, but not just the survey plans of the ring ditch sites, I also looked at the horizon, and that's when I found very clear indications of astronomical orientation. Some gates have a very easily explained astronomical purpose, others have none at all. A popular place for a day trip in Saxony-Anhalt, Mittelberg. This is the exact spot where two illegal treasure hunters in 1999 found a treasure of literally inestimable value. They naturally weren't interested in the fame, they wanted cash and sold their find for 31,000 Deutschmarks. What happened next was pure Hollywood, culminating in a police sting operation that returned the find in 2002 to its rightful owner, the state of Saxony-Anhalt. Not far from the spot where the disc was found, a multimedia information center was then created, the Nebra Ark. Visitors learn a great deal here about Bronze Age trade routes, about the basics of celestial mechanics, and about prehistoric metal alloys. The original sky disk found its final resting place at the Museum of Prehistory in Halle. The find today is insured for 100 million euros. Another clear reference to the Pleiades. But what is really fabulous about the sky disk treasure is the insight it provides into both Bronze Age craftsmanship and symbolic thought. The Nebra sky disk is the oldest depiction of the heavens in the world. It may well have been a reminder about leap years for a seasonal calendar, a device used to keep the solar year synchronized with the lunar year. I think the most important thing about the sky disk is that it brings together two disciplines, archaeology and astronomy. Archaeology investigates questions like, where do we come from and what's our history? And astronomy is associated with looking at the heavens and the movement of the stars, and by extension, looking at time and perhaps even the future. And we are still fascinated stargazers today. That fascination is heightened even more by a closer look at the knowledge underlying the symbols on the sky disk. Again, we find the rising and setting points of the sun, which move south towards midwinter and north towards midsummer. On the sky disk, the range is indicated by a golden arc. Once that was realized, it was a small step to show that the arc of the sun's path indicated on the disk was exactly right for the latitude of the place where the disk was found. Two swords, two axe heads, a chisel and bracelets were also found with the sky disk. The swords and axe heads could be dated by style. 
These accompanying finds may also illustrate something else at Nebra. Bronze Age swords rarely make headlines nowadays, but the astronomically verifiable image of the sky depicted on the Nebra disk has helped a once derided branch of research win new respect, archaeoastronomy. Thanks to the Nebra Sky Disk, archaeoastronomy is again taken seriously as a science. Let's travel back in time. 1500 BC, the Sky Disk has been buried for a hundred years. Around 2500 BC, the largest stones were erected at Stonehenge. 3500 BC, most of the dolmens, the stone tables, were in place. Around four and a half thousand years BC, passage tombs were constructed in Brittany. And predating them all, ring ditch enclosures built over a fairly short period around 5000 BC. A hill in the southern English county of Wiltshire. At first glance, just a mound like many others. On closer examination, a massive hill fort, 405 metres long and 360 metres wide. This place was a settlement site 5,000 years ago, and whoever called the shots in the south of England kept a military base here at Old Serum. Lack of space and shortage of water prompted the construction of New Serum. Today, it's the city of Salisbury. The dominant landmark is the cathedral with its 123 metre spire, the highest in England. Construction work started in 1220 and was completed just 38 years later. What is remarkable is the geographical relationship of Stonehenge, Old Serum and Salisbury Cathedral. The central points of all three structures are precisely aligned. Since the 1920s, people have looked for and recorded alignments of far-flung cult sites. The amateur scientists in the field call them ley lines. It's sometimes difficult to draw a line between chance and design. Writer and researcher Paul Devereaux has been investigating lost civilizations for more than 40 years. In his books and lectures, he always seeks explanations that are supported by science, but his approach differs from the established methods. So we bring the Stone Age into modern laboratories and we're beginning to learn something. They knew things, the people who built the megaliths, about human consciousness. The one technology they had that was far superior to ours was the knowledge of the human mind. Uh, and we're very primitive, very primitive. That's why our mainstream worldview is reductionist, it's materialistic, and so on. Because we're trying to see and hear with Stone Age eyes and ears.